Good evening and welcome to the Church by the Sea Meditation. I'm Reverend Barbara E. Singer, and I'm delighted that you've joined us this evening. I hope and pray that all is well with you and your loved ones. And tonight, tonight, I invite you to find a quiet corner, a simple place where you are comfortable. where you can breathe deeply and feel the presence of God. I also invite you tonight as we prepare for the meditation through prayer to also prepare in other ways. If there is a candle in your home, I invite you to bring it closer, to light it, and during the meditation, perhaps even look upon it. I invite you to consider the smells that are around you. Perhaps there's an oil or scent in your house that you particularly like. This would be a good time to spray it, to open it, to let it envelop you. Consider what you're sitting on, how it feels. Maybe you want to grab a blanket, something to wrap in, or just to cover your feet. Maybe this is a time for you to get a cup of tea, something calming but delicious something soothing as you drink it or a refreshing glass of water. Consider everything that is around you, all the ways in which it enhances your life and your experience tonight. And let us pray. Holy One, open my eyes that I may see you reflected in all the blessings around me. Open my ears that I may hear you in the lowly, quiet voice that speaks compassion and guidance. Open my heart so I may recognize your presence, God, in the smell of the magnolia, the taste of the mango, the sound of the sea, the sight of the horizon, the feel of your arms enveloping me, reminding me in so many ways that you are here, that I am loved, and that all is well. Amen.
Tonight, I want us to focus our attention in a slightly different way. Perhaps in this meditation, you will want to close your eyes, but perhaps not. Regardless, tonight we are going to focus on the senses. Sight, taste, touch, what we hear and what we smell. And so I want to read on something written by Helen Keller. Of course, we all know that Helen Keller was a child that was born without the ability to see or hear. And she was challenged, of course, to learn to speak. She wrote this as a thanksgiving prayer. We habitually thank God for material blessings, abundant crops, good health, and prosperity. We think of illness, failure, and hard times as holy evil, and we pray fervently to be delivered from them. But banishing them would not be good for us, even if it could be done. We should try to think of them as endurance tests, which develop our powers, strengthen our wills, and invigorate our minds. The worst sorrows in life are not its losses and misfortunes, but its fears. Often, a misfortune turns out to be a new prospect of life because it calls forth new interests and sympathies of which we were not aware before. There are many of us who have an impediment, a something wanting withheld that prevents our inner extensions from flowering out into visible fact and deed. Flowers that require the rain of tears to bring them to bloom. I like to think our individual trials are unfolding our characters all the while and preparing us for the service which God has revealed for us in God's infinite wisdom. Helen's prayer reminds us of the teaching of Jesus. Jesus invites the disciples to move beyond the limitations of their understanding, to heal, to preach, to teach themselves. He invites Peter to walk on water and then reminds him to do this, he must have faith. We too must have faith. Even in science, we know that the senses are a product of the brain. And in COVID, some have lost their ability to taste. And to smell. The loss of these senses is an effect, of course, that is happening to the brain. But the brain is a gift from God, one which we are invited to expand. And we can do that through prayer and meditation. What Helen is inviting us to do, challenging us to do, is to see this time in our lives and in our world as a time to bloom, 
a time to develop our character. And I would suggest it is a time for us not to limit God. Helen was able to do remarkable things despite what some would see as a handicap. This is how God operates in our world. God is only limited by our imagination and by the way in which we allow the culture to dictate our beliefs. So tonight, I invite you to consider your own senses. How is God present? How remarkable are they? It is a gift given to us and our challenge will be what we do with them. So let us tonight focus on our senses, how they connect us to God and enhance our lives and world. how they serve us and how we can use them to serve God. Let us breathe. Take a deep breath. In and out. Let us focus first on sight. Consider the candle, the light. Consider that darkness can be only a symptom of the mind, not a reality. That we can close our eyes and see light all around us. We can see it as a reflection of Christ. And as we breathe, we see all the possibilities in our lives. All the ways that God has blessed us with beauty with goodness, with peace, with compassion. And we breathe in those feelings. And we breathe out darkness. and all those feelings that limit God and limit our ability to see beauty. Consider now those in your life that reflect light. What are their qualities? Why are they beautiful? What is it about their spirits that are so attractive, that so reflect the Christ? Breathe it in. Let it envelop you. Let it become you.
and then breathe it out into the world to serve God. Let us consider what we hear. Jesus hears, you are my precious child in whom I am well pleased. He hears this before he must go into the world and serve God. He hears this as an affirmation. What are you hearing? What are the words that you speak to yourself? Are they kind and compassionate? Gentle and loving? Do they affirm the light in you? Or are they judgmental? cruel, unkind. As you breathe in, breathe in words that are gentle, words that would have been spoken by Jesus, words that heal and offer hope. and breathe out words that no longer serve you or God. Now consider the sense of smell. And even if you have lost any of these senses, still consider in memory what they were like, the gifts that they offer, baking bread as its aroma wafts through the home, the magnolia blossom, its fragrance, permeating the air, bringing beauty even through smell. The smell of the ocean, the crisp, clean smell of beach. and the breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, remembering, contemplating, considering the gift of smell. Consider the gift of taste. The tea you may be drinking. Or food that you have had. The way in which It fills your body, bringing energy, comfort, contentment. Consider meals with family and friends, past or present.
taste reminiscent of people in our lives. Feeling the love they offered, the tradition, the culture, the gifts. and the way in which Jesus is concerned for feeding those around him. Now consider touch. The feel of a soft blanket. A gentle breeze across our skin. The way a loved one touches our cheek. Reminding us they are there. And even if they are not tonight, we can remember and embrace their love as they have embraced us. Feel God's arms around you tonight. Feel God's strength holding you. Feel God's love enveloping you. Continue to breathe in and breathe out. Consider all of our senses, the gifts that they are to us. Consider that even without some, if we lose our sense of hearing, if smell disappears, if sight begins to fade, other senses can expand. because God is never limited. In the breath of God's imagination, seen through all these senses, we, in our mind's eye, can see and hear and know God. regardless of what is happening within our bodies. God is there and we can breathe God in and we can know this through all these gifts God provides. Let us reflect on the light that is Christ. Let us breathe in the knowledge that God's arms enfold us. God's strength holds us up. And God's beauty is always with us. And God's words affirm us, reminding us that we are loved. Let us take some time to reflect, to consider, 
to remember and to breathe. Slowly now take time to open your eyes and come back into your space and join with me in this prayer by Ted Loder. Gentle me, Holy One, into an unclenched moment, a deep breath, a letting go of heavy experiences, of shriveling anxieties of dead certainties that softened by the silence, surrounded by the light and open to the mystery, I may be found by wholesome, upheld by the unfathomable, entranced by the simple, and filled with the joy that is you, God. Amen. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful week and that you take time to reflect on the ways in which God touches our senses every day, offering us gifts, possibilities, and new joys. Go in peace. Good evening.